Hi, welcome to another installment of the Flying with Autism series. Today I'm going to talk about some of the things you might want to consider when you're planning a long-haul flight with an autistic passenger. I'm going to say up front that autism does not look the same in everybody. There is such a big range of verbal and cognitive abilities. Some autistic people don't mind being touched, others cannot stand it. Some will go out of their way to avoid loud noises and bright lights, others will seek them out. Some autistic people don't do well in crowds, and for others, they're totally fine with it. So what I share with you is based on my own experiences with George. Whether you are autistic yourself or traveling with an autistic friend or family member, feel free to take whatever recommendations you think are going to work for you. And if you have your own flying with autism experiences that you'd like to share, please leave me a comment. So in booking this flight with George, I've been concerned with two things the airport and the flight itself. George has never flown, but I'm not too concerned about the actual flight. I figure that as long as he has enough charge on his electronics, we'll be good to go. He's a very good car traveler. We have gone on several very long car trips down as far as New York and further, and he has been absolutely fine. The only exception was when I promised him a stop at McDonald's, and the McDonald's en route turned out to be closed for renovations. It wasn't pretty. Now I'm pretty sure George isn't going to expect the pilot to make an unscheduled stop at a drive through so, you know, here's hoping. My bigger concern is the airport. Airports are very busy places and George does not like to be there. After a while he gets all squirmy and anxious. He doesn't seem to mind the lights and the sounds very much, but the constant rush of people and the hyped up activity get to him. I mean, to be fair, airports make me feel on edge, so I can only imagine what it must be like for him. That being said, his tolerance for airports has improved dramatically over the years. When I went to South Africa in 2012, my family pretty much had to drop me off at the airport and leave right away because George just could not handle being there. Now he can be there for a good two or three hours and show minimal signs of distress. There's no way I would have attempted this trip with him five years ago, but now with proper planning, I think we'll be good. So I spoke to a bunch of airlines and I contacted the airport here in Toronto. I also reached out to the autism community for advice. Seriously, social media is amazing because it connects you to so many people who are more than willing to share their experiences and give you advice. So these are the recommendations that I came up with. First, the bane of every traveler's existence, airport security. Yes, it is necessary. Yes, we have to go through it. But there might be some things we can do to make the process a little bit easier. I got in touch with CAPSA, which is the Canadian, I believe it stands for the Canadian Air Transport Security Authority. And I've asked them a couple of questions. Number one, I asked them if they have special lineups for people with disabilities. And number two, I asked them if they have screening agents who are trained in the screening of nonverbal autistic passengers. Whatever their response turns out to be, I'm sure they will give me some information that will be very, very useful. Second, navigating the airport. Now this is the big one for me because airports are so busy and so crowded. When we pass through that security checkpoint, we're going to want to find a place that is a little bit off the beaten track, a little bit quieter, a little bit less busy, fewer people. So what I did was I contacted Pearson Airport here in Toronto to ask them for some suggestions. And I was super impressed. They sent me such a detailed response. They told me where some of the quieter places are. They told me about some of the things that we can do to make this, uh, to make this whole process easier. They also told me about a free app called Magnus Cards, which was designed for people with autism and intellectual and cognitive disabilities. This app is designed to make air travel easier for people like George. I am super excited to download it and use it with George. I will post a review when I've had a chance to look at it, so stay tuned for that. While you're figuring out what's where at the airport, it's worth your while to find out what facilities there are at the gates and in the waiting areas. Pearson Airport has these lounge type areas that are full of iPads that are free for use. That's really useful if your electronics are stashed away in your bag and you don't want to go through the hassle of digging them out, or if you just want to conserve your own battery power. Electronics are a big thing for George, it's going to be a big coping mechanism for him during this trip. So knowing where there are electronics and charging areas is a key thing for us. Then we come to the accommodations offered by the airlines themselves. After going back and forth and sideways and back again for a couple of weeks, I finally settled on KLM because they seem to have the widest range of accommodations that we might need. 
For a start, they're going to let us select our seats in advance free of charge. What that means is that we won't have to wait until 24 hours before we fly to choose our seats. We'll be able to do that now. That is key for us because I know George is going to want to sit by the window, but because he's got long legs, it'll be a little cramped in there for him. He will not be used to it. So it'll be good to sit in a place where it's a little bit easier for him to get up or he can at least stretch out a little bit. Some of the seats do offer a little bit of extra leg room, so that's what we're hoping for. The bigger thing for us is that KLM are offering us priority boarding. That means I'll be able to get George onto the plane and settled into his seat before the other passengers show up. That'll give him time to get used to his surroundings and just get used to being on the plane and to get comfortable. In terms of other things that I can do to prepare, the biggest one for me is making sure George has enough power in his electronics. When you're planning something as big as this with somebody who is autistic, you have to keep things as familiar as they can. George is absolutely reliant on his tablet and I cannot let it run out of power. So I will be stocking up on portable chargers and cables and all of that kind of stuff well ahead of time to make sure that does not happen. So that's it for the accommodations at the airport and during the flight. If you think I've missed anything, please let me know in the comments. Feel free to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.